All right, guys, so I'm starting a new video series in order to build a proper gasifier and hopefully show you guys how to uh, as well. I'm going to start this out by with this video. I've already filmed a lot of my other videos, give you a sneak preview. I've already built that. You know what that is. I've got video clips coming in after this uh, section that will show you what I did to do that. So, um, Mostly I'm going to show you a what's called a flashifier. Uh, it's a style of invert gasifier made by Flash001 USA. I'm going to be uh, very closely following his design with a couple of um, with a couple of different things to it just because I don't have the same materials as he does. But it'll be pretty close to the same thing. Um, but first I'm going to get to the most important part of this video. Um, that's why I'm putting this part first, even though I've already filmed some, because I think this is the part that people need to see in order to understand gasifiers, especially if you're a first time gasifier builder, uh, as I pretty much am. I built one before it's over there, but it really didn't work out that well. So I suspended, um, that project in order to build this one. So what I'm going to explain to you right now is just kind of how it works. This here will be the drying hopper, fill it full of wood, and then it'll come down here to where the air comes in, this green line, or this blue line, and right here will be the combustion zone. Right here is where the heat from the combustion zone heats up the wood, and this is called the paralysis zone, and it essentially decomposes the wood into gases like methane, hydrogen, uh, carbon monoxide, and a few other things, but those are the burnable gases, mostly meth or mostly carbon monoxide and hydrogen. Um, then it goes down through here into a reduction zone. This is will be full of biochar because the oxygen will have all been burned up right here, so there won't be hardly any uh, burning going down on down here. It'll be really hot, and the biochar will also kind of scrub the gas from tar and other things. You go down through a shaker grate, which is this, come up through here to the side of the barrel, in the empty space in the barrel, down here into my first cyclone filter, which is mostly just to remove water and tar and cool off the gas a little bit, up, and that will be my, made from my existing filter over there, as you can see the two propane tanks on top of each other. I'll try to salvage that, change it up a little bit, and use it again on this one. And then it'll go into a brand new real cyclone filter that will hopefully remove a lot of the ash and uh, some condensation as well. And that will collect down here into a universal collection container. Going up again into a radiator. It'll be built just like Flash 001 USA's with a little baffle right here so that the gas evenly spreads down all these pipes. It won't go up, down, it won't go down, up, down, up. Um, it'll just go all down all four of these and then out into a filter which I've not determined yet what that will be uh, probably multiple filters actually and then into my engine the engine I want to run is a 6.5 cheapo um, Harbor Freight engine and then maybe up to the engine on this check tractor which is I believe a 16 or 15 horsepower also Harbor Freight engine, but I think my dad wants to take it off the tractor and replace it with a Honda. So hopefully I can try to run that engine with it, which I'll only do if I get a nice blue flame as Flash 001 USA does. That's why I'm copying him because he had the bluest, cleanest burning flame I'd seen. So now this is the important part. This is what I've had trouble finding everywhere on the internet. And if I were you, I'd pause this video and take a good look at this right here. This is directly from the Handbook of Biomass Downdraft Gasifier Engine Systems, the FEMA Handbook as everyone calls it. And these are the measurements that I found to be most important when building a gasifier. So we have the dimensions of the most important parts to the horsepower of the engine that you want to run. And this is directly from the FEMA, uh, FEMA manual, um, and 
they had it all in metric millimeters and a lot of things that didn't quite match up so I try to make them as best as possible. So these might not be perfectly accurate but they'll get you in the ballpark of probably where you want to start and a lot of these things are pretty uh, variable just not the two things I have here written um, starred uh, to the corresponding horsepower. So at five horsepower just for example Actually, I'll do, for example, the engine I want to run. The one I'm building is going to be approximately 10 to 15 horsepower. So, therefore, right here is what we have right here in this picture. The combustion area, also known as the hearth zone in the FEMA manual, um, and the biochar area, uh, also known as like the final reduction zone. In the FEMA manual, it looks like this because they have a typical invert style gasifier. So it has a bottom cone instead of just a straight pipe downwards. But I'm going to have a straight pipe downwards because I believe that is um, that works just as well. So as you can see here, DH, diameter of the hearth, height of the hearth, height of the reduction area, and diameter of the reduction area. And all you need to do to convert to the invert style instead of the flash of fire style is make dr right here the, re the reduction area instead of the reduction cone so for my gasifier which would be the 10 horsepower approximately my height of my um or my uh, diameter of my hearth needs to be about 5.1 inches i can tell you right now mine's 5.25 um the height needs to be approximately 3.75 I thought that maybe a little bit longer area would help. This is what comes from the book. So a little longer area I believe would be better because it'll just give it more area to crack the tar and to heat up. But that's just my opinion. Maybe this is better. So that would be the height right here for a 10 horsepower engine. And then the this this is most important right here. The diameter of the reduction zone right here or right here on an invert style for a 10 horsepower engine it's about two inches it's a lot smaller than you would think but it's true and it's about two about two inches in diameter across your final reduction zone and then about 4.4 inches tall i believe minus three inches tall but i would like to make it a little bit bigger about 3.25 inches tall so Here's one last good look at this chart from the Handbook of Biomass Downdraft Gasifier Systems. It's a good starting point. Not completely necessary to follow everything because um, I will not be doing the same kind of air intake that they have. I'll show you how I do that in a different video. And you can watch Flash 001 USA's videos to show or to see how he makes his air intake, which I believe is a lot simpler to build than that FEMA, uh, FEMA handbook uh, recommends. But with all that said, I'll get into the actual build. Thanks for watching.